I'll maybe say just one thing that, um, you know, I think this dialogue on e-cigarettes um, and nicotine is going to continue, and it's an important one. But I would hope that it doesn't distract from all the other uh, tools we have and things we need to be doing. I think one of the, uh, the things that has happened um, is there's a narrative uh, that I think some people are buying into. A lot of us get distracted by <coughs> that if we can only figure out e-cigarettes, will solve this problem. Um, when in fact, uh, we have an industry now that is opposing every tax um, increase that is being put out there. And we know that raising the price of tobacco is probably the most effective thing we have to help smokers quit and prevent initiation. And that's just an example. Um, so uh, I think it's an important conversation, but I hope it doesn't prevent us from focusing on all the other things we have. This is a additive to the toolbox. It's not the tool. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. I think, I think what I would say in closing is, um, as divisive as the e-cigarette debate has been within the public health and tobacco control sectors, it, it, the, the ongoing attention that, that, that this category is receiving is an opportunity to raise to society, to everyone who uh, could possibly be interested in this, because we all have a friend or a loved one who's been affected uh, by tobacco. Um, and that is to start asking some really tough questions about nicotine and nicotine policy. Nicotine does not directly cause the cancer, lung disease, and heart disease. 90% of all smokers started smoking when they were kids. Half of them became regular smokers before they turned the age of 18. And it's because of the presence of nicotine delivered in an extraordinarily efficient way from the cigarette to receptors in the brain in less than 10 seconds. With pulmonary delivery of nicotine in the absence of combustion, we now have some tough questions to ask ourselves as a society about nicotine and, uh, and the so-called continuum of risk. And uh, unintended consequences and intended consequences. Tough questions like, if somebody needs to stay on one of these alternative nicotine delivery products for a long period of time or possibly forever, how, how do we feel about that? Especially if it's, if it's a technology like e-cigarettes uh, that because there's pulmonary delivery raises what's called the abuse liability profile of this product, meaning it's more addictive or can be more addictive. But what if that's what it takes for that smoker to avoid the lapse and the relapse to the most harmful form of nicotine delivery, which is the cigarette. Howard said, cigarettes kill half of all long-term users. Cigarettes are the only consumer product that are designed in a way that will kill half of all long-term users later in life. And that's why tobacco use remains the leading cause of preventable disease and death in the country and the world. So my closing thought is, this puts some really tough questions about nicotine policy on the table, not just for people in the field and policymakers, but for everybody. Either of you have closing remarks? Very quickly, <laughs> yeah. I realize we're out of time. Um, I think you know we've got to keep our eye on the big picture, and that is uh, that is combusted tobacco use. With uh, you know with the advent of the 21st century and technological innovation, we've seen the introduction of new products that have enormous appeal for young people that offer. Uh, the promise of, uh, of lower risk, we need to uh, we need to capitalise on our capacity to uh, to innovate and to regulate uh, the, these technological innovations in a way that uh, that, that protects or supports uh, um, reduction of harm among adult smokers, while uh, while ensuring that we uh, we make these products less cool, less appealing, less addictive uh, to protect uh, young people from ever beginning. And so I would think. Conclude very simply, we have to keep our kids substance free. We have to reverse this vaping epidemic as soon as possible. Uh, and then we have to help smokers find the best ways to uh, quit or, or protect uh, them as they uh, look at possible ways to reduce harm. And then all those conversations have got to support, as all my colleagues have said, this broader conversation is of how best we um, reduce the level of suffering from tobacco dependence worldwide. All right, well, thank, thank you all. Thank you to panelists for uh, sharing their thoughts, and thank you all for coming. And I think that wraps it up. <laughs> <laughs>